Week two, here we go. Lads, I'm gonna be honest, I have a second coffee in me before 11 a.m. So this is gonna be a snappy intro. But welcome back to Style Study Month where we do a new style study every single week as a gift from me to you to say well done for surviving this year. And today's video has been requested two times but I cannot find the first request for the life of me. But I know for a fact that my friend Izzy had sent me a message a couple of years ago asking if I wanted to cover this artist in a style study and then I changed my whatsapp number and I lost that request and she's technically not an artist in the visual art sense that girl can do wonders with a makeup brush and one of them box cutter things but um yeah anyway so even she has really good art taste sorry about that Izzy but I promise you I remember this memory you guys anyway the second request comes from Ash on our discord server who asked if I would do a style study on Anthony Jones also known by by his online name Robot Pencil. If you've watched a style study before you know the drill time sums are in the description make sure to like comment subscribe it helps the channel out a lot and I love you but if you're new here hi welcome my name is Swish and I'm so glad you're here because today we're gonna level up your art by like a million percent. Style study is a regular series we do here on my channel where we take a look at some of our favorite artists analyze their work and see what we can learn from it. Keyword learn we're not trying to plagiarize we're only here to learn some cool art tips and techniques and see how we can apply them to finding our own unique art style i usually structure my style studies in three parts in part one we'll take a look at anthony's work analyze his style and see what we can learn from it part two will be a study of one of his original paintings the surprisingly challenging reference i've chosen today is this one and in part three we'll apply everything that we learned today to an original painting of our own. If you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please do remember to like, subscribe and comment your thoughts down below. It helps the channel out so, so much. But now, whenever you're ready, grab a snack, a bag and let's dive into another style study featuring a robot pencil. Anthony Jones is an art director, art educator, concept artist and illustrator from Irvine, USA. He specializes in dark fantasy characters, creature and mech art, but he hadn't always planned to be an artist. In an article for ArtStation, Anthony mentioned how he started off as a plumber's apprentice, then became a programmer for video games and then found concept art as a viable career choice since that is what he was truly interested in. I wanted to mention this specifically because it is stories like Anthony's that show us that we don't always have to know right from the get-go exactly what we're meant to do in our lives. There is so much undue pressure on us to figure it all out on our first try, but reading stories like this one truly helped me feel validated and I hope it does the same for you too. Anthony has worked with many giants in the entertainment industry, including Blizzard, Sony and Paramount Pictures, though what really got me hyped for this study is the fact that he also did some concepts for Netflix's Love, Death and Robots. And quite frankly, that show feels like it would be the perfect fit for his style. His incredible dynamic art has garnered him over 173,000 followers on Instagram and over 53,000 subscribers here on YouTube. As I said earlier, I would definitely classify Anthony's art as dark fantasy concept art that is focused on a central character. In fact, in his video called Speed Paint Number 3, What Makes Things Cool, Anthony mentioned how he isn't super into world building, but rather prefers to up his technical art skills. He also goes on to mention how he prefers to look at art as ideas and concepts rather than how it was created or what tools 
tools we use, which I think is a super important skill to learn as a student or even just as a viewer. Now, I am nowhere near proficient with concept art to try and break down his thought process during concepting, so instead we're gonna focus on the visual elements that translate his concepts so beautifully onto the canvas. And I found that the name of the game when it comes to Anthony's work is contrast. Everything we look at today boils down to that one idea in its many forms, and you will be surprised at how this works because I know I was. There are striking polarities in his work that really make his art look very dualist. Speaking of this, here are four key characteristics to Anthony's art. Like I said, the name of the game today is contrast, and the simplest form of contrast in art is between light and dark. Luckily for us, Anthony has a fair few grayscale paintings online for us to learn from. The number one priority in the vast majority of his work is the silhouette. I'd say Anthony is probably the best artist I know when it comes to dynamic, interesting silhouettes that truly stand apart from the background. And while it is mostly due to the shapes, and we'll look at this in a bit, a lot of the drama in the silhouette comes from value contrast. If the background is dark, the edges of the character are bright and vice versa. And if the background is a mid-tone, the edges contain both shadow and highlight, but there is generally a huge difference in value between said edges and the tone of the background. The point is you notice the character regardless of whatever else may be going on in the scene. In fact, a lot of the times you will see some really impactful edge or rim light hit the outer edges of the character. And while we know that adding rim light is a quick and fun way to add loads and loads of drama instantly, it also serves an important purpose and that is to enhance the form and or texture of the edge. So here you see that the rim light really helps us see the anatomy on the side of the character's face and that would otherwise be lost in the shadows. Here we see that although the edge would have stood out as is, Anthony added the extra bit of rim light to really push the texture on that side of the face. When it comes to rendering skin or flesh, I suppose, there's a couple of interesting things he does that seem to contradict each other, but stick with me, it will make sense. When you look at the shadows on the skin, they are simultaneously softly gradated and also hard edged. So if we look at the way the light hits down this character's torso, it looks like a soft gradient into the darkness with some drop shadows, but let's ignore those for the moment. When you zoom into the body, you see that it is made almost exclusively of hard edges. So how is this possible? The answer, my friends, lies in value separation. A gradient is essentially several values arranged together in such a way that the separation between adjacent values is tiny, and that makes it look smooth. So if I have swatches of black and white next to each other, that is a hard edge. If I add a gray in between, it is now a slightly smoother transition. If I add more grays, it gets even smoother, and on and on until you have enough values in there that the edges don't seem as harsh. So when we look at a painting like this that has a smooth value gradient but with hard edges, the reason it looks so smooth is because the value contrast between adjacent colors is so low, it is almost unnoticeable unless you actually Actually zoom in. And then this smoothness is further enhanced by the harsh, flat, super hard edged rim light, which adds a second layer of contrast. This is my favorite part of Anthony's art, is his brushwork. So let's look a little deeper into it. A lot of his work is made up of many hard edges with very little blending, and the blending is mostly concentrated in the skin. Let's get the background out of the way first. You'll see that if there is a lot of texture or detail on the character, the background will likely be flat or nondescript. We know that a flat surface is a visually quiet 
quiet zone, so having all the noise concentrated on the character is an excellent way to throw your attention right at them, kind of like how a loud noise would echo extra loud in a quiet room. Now let's look at the texture within the character. Here is an excellent, super effective example. Looking at the skin, you'll see that it is obviously made up of hard edges, but the edges themselves are smooth and not textured. Plus, like we saw earlier, the values are tightly controlled in a narrow range for the most part, meaning that even with the hard edges, it appears smooth when you zoom out because there isn't very much value separation. However, take a look at the hair, especially where it interfaces with the skin. Oh, what's that? Texture. Down here in the beard? More texture. Even down here in the drop shadow on the neck, there's texture. There's also a bit of texture around the edges of the fabric. Notice how the hair and the fabric are also super dark. To me, this seems like another amazing way to create contrast, because those rough textured edges now make the skin look even softer to a point where you barely register that it has so many hard flat tones. This is actually a theme in a lot of his work, where not only does the hair and outfit contrast the skin very strongly, they are also painted with noticeably textured brushes, while it seems like the skin is painted with a brush that puts down flat colours and has some hard but smooth edges. That way you have a solid amount of contrast caused by the texture itself. On a similar note as the texture, let's now take a look at the shapes in Anthony's art. You'll see that there is an obvious contrast in the large and small shapes. The larger shapes make up the overall silhouettes and forms, but are broken up by a multitude of smaller shapes either around or within them. Having too many large expansive shapes can get a little dull and monotonous, so those smaller shapes serve to almost breathe life into the piece. On the other hand, too many little tiny shapes can be a recipe for stray up chaos, so those big expansive shapes help space them out and make sense of all the noise. The majority of the big shapes lie in areas where you would want to see a quiet zone in terms of the concept. Like we saw before in character pieces, this is usually the flat background, the ultimate big shape which makes all of the shapes of the character the visually noisy elements. However, even within the character, I notice a very specific pattern. A lot of the large expansive shapes lie in the skin. So here you'll see there is a large shape of highlight from under the eye all the way down to the moustache and it wraps all the way to the start of the zygomatic arch. Here there is a gigantic shape in the upper arm and another one in the forearm. Sure, there are smaller shapes within these large ones, but they are fairly low contrast so when you zoom out, it definitely looks like one large shape. By contrast, the shapes in the outfits and jewellery and weapons and hair tend to be both small and high contrast. Here you see it in the shoulder piece and what I'm guessing is the horns. Here you have the smaller shapes in the fabric and jewellery. However, there is another layer to the large and small shapes in his work and that is all about the story. Thing is, you'll notice that a lot of the times, the big shapes are actually the focal point of the painting. Coming back to this image, while this character has skin on both their arms and their face, it is only the big arm muscles that have the big low contrast shapes. The face and also the abs here have smaller, noisier shapes. This to me seems like he wants us to really focus on the big Hulk arm, which tells us that this character basically runs on brute force. Here's a mech design that also follows this idea. It's not even human, but you'll see that the largest flat shapes lie in the arms and what is the mech equivalent of thighs. In humans, these are the load-bearing parts of our body, meaning this mech is probably designed for heavy lifting or some function that requires strength. 
And the reason that this works so nicely is that since these large shapes are right next to the smaller, noisier element, our eyes seek out the closest rest stop. This is something we've seen in quite a few style studies before and it works every single time. Making the focal element be a visually quiet zone in a painting means that the viewer actively seeks it out and sticks to it for a very long time. Let's quickly run through the colours in Anthony's art, because there is one super important role they play in the story of his pieces. First off, the palettes tend to cycle between complementary, split complementary, or analogous palettes. It isn't super often that you only see him use two colours in a painting, but when he does, the two colours are usually co-dominant in that they tend to have equal saturation. However, what really made me step back and take a moment was the fact that when it comes to the colours across his paintings, it is either that all of the colours are muted or all of them are saturated. It is actually rather rare to see a painting that has both muted and saturated tones. By that, I don't mean that you won't see both muted and saturated tones of the same colour in a painting, but rather that if a painting has two accent colours, say red and blue, they are either both predominant muted or both predominantly saturated. You almost never find that one is muted while the other is saturated. In terms of storytelling, this is really interesting because it either shows us that everything is extremely bright and noisy or everything is super mellow and quiet. It is either sensory overload or sensory deprivation. Again, contrast but more on a meta level across his body of work. So to sum up part one, here are four key characteristics to Anthony Jones's art. Number one, he uses a strong silhouette and value contrast to ensure that the character is the primary focus of a scene. Plus, the strong rim light acts as a great enhancer of the silhouette, form and texture. Two, while Anthony uses a lot of hard edges, it is the textures of these edges that really tell us whether the surface is smooth or rough. Number three, the shape language is a huge part of storytelling, wherein the large expansive shapes act as the focal element of his paintings, and the smaller shapes bring in a lot of movement to break the piece up. And number four, he uses colours that are either all muted or all saturated in order to pack lots of mood into every coloured painting. For the study this week, I went with this reference. I know it is grayscale, but I really wanted to learn about conscious brushwork with this one, and colour would have been just an extra layer of complication. Don't worry, the original painting this week is in full colour. I must say this is the first painting I've done in a while where I used quite so many texture brushes right from the very beginning. Because this is already a fairly rough reference, it actually came together really quick in that I was able to place the facial features fairly accurately. That said, however, tightening the value scale is where I struggle the most. You know I love my paintings to have a wide range of values from super bright to super dark. However, However, here, while we have white in the background and the rim light, the rest of the painting is well within the darker half of the value scale. It was definitely a huge lesson for me when it comes to lighting and perceived value. Like literally, if you look at the colour picker on the side, you'll see my colours don't go any lighter than 50% grey for the most part. And yet, looking at the painting itself, it feels like there are much brighter tones within the skin. And then I started to obsess over the texture. Oh boy, when I tell you I was caught in a rut trying to copy every single brush edge in the reference, this study took just over an hour to do, and about half of it was me trying to perfect the textures. I used all kinds of brushes and eventually just had to slap myself in the face because there is no way you can truly replicate every texture on their swish. The texture is a result of building up the brushwork and you're just trying to study the end product, not painting along the entire process. 
I should mention I did this entire painting on a single layer just because I really wanted the values to play off of each other and make it seem super traditional, kind of like the reference does. It looks like two layers, but the background, which is the bottom layer, is just locked and untouched. I was just too lazy to delete it. I redid the background because, again, obsessed with the texture, and then did some of the finishing details. And here is the finished study. What do you think? So this painting started as just me wanting to experiment with A, more dynamic shapes and B, a strong silhouette. Barely either of those things happened at the end, but hey, I experimented. The compositional sketch went through several different iterations because I couldn't decide whether I wanted to paint in portrait or landscape. I ended up going with landscape in the end just because I don't use that orientation enough. I also definitely wanted some of those rope elements you see in a lot of Anthony's work just because it looked cool really. The colour palette is somewhere between a complementary and a split complementary because I went with a blue and orange and then also some red and yellow and also some pink. I don't know man, this painting was all over the place. I started with some spikes around her waist thinking it would make for a really nice silhouette element but eventually got rid of them because there was already so much going on in the painting. I wanted to portray our character who is coming down from a high point in her life but she's tied so much of her happiness to said high point that when it starts to fade she starts to be surrounded by a quickly approaching shroud of darkness and depression and then the arm of addiction and unhealthy the coping mechanisms starts to reach out from the dark disguised as a helping hand tempting her back into the deep. Clearly a light-hearted painting, eh? But anyway, in retrospect I do feel like I made her a little too bright considering the style that we're studying, but with this one in particular I wanted to focus on textures and the contrast between the large smooth areas and the smaller noisy bits. I think this is my new favourite way of doing art for style studies, is to set very specific skills I want to focus on with each of the two paintings, rather than try to learn it all with both of the paintings. I hope that makes sense. I messed around with the colours and saturation some more, and here is the end product, which I actually ended up quite liking. And there we have it, Robot Pencil Demystified. I feel like as we go through these style studies, my brain is slowly but surely learning how to make more conscious, well thought out design choices and brushwork. Um, I feel like that is my personal next goal in my art journey. But what do you think? What is your biggest takeaway from this study? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, if you enjoyed this video and learned something today, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you wanna say hi or just have a little chat i'll leave links to my instagram and my discord server down below the discord server is free to join and you'll make some amazing new art friends oh and if there are any other artists you'd like to see a style study on first check out my style study playlist i'll leave it up here in the outro um i've done a ton of these and chances are i've covered some of your faves on it already but in case i haven't feel free to either leave a comment below letting me know which style study you'd like to see next or just come leave them in my discord server because we have a whole other channel for requests. Thank you so much again to Ash and Izzy for requesting this video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it and that it's been everything you've been looking for. And that's about all I have to say today. So thank you guys so, so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Check out some more style studies up here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.